Hi guys, so today we're going to be continuing on projectile motion. Continuing where we left off with the Nelson chapter 1.5 questions. Starting off with number 6, a rock is thrown at an angle of 65 degrees above the horizontal at 16 meters per second up a hill that makes an angle 30 degrees with the horizontal. How far up the hill will the rock go before hitting the ground? Just creating a quick sketch of this problem, your initial velocity would be something like that. 65 degrees above the horizontal, and you know that there's a hill that it's landing on that's 30 degrees. As shown in the previous video, we're going to be analyzing the components independently. So analyzing the question for the givens, first of all, we're given the initial velocity here, as well as the angle of projection. Looking at our quick sketch, we'll see that if we break the initial velocity into x and y components, the x component is related through the cos, since you are solving for your adjacent side, and for your y component, you're solving for the opposite side, so you're using sine. So V1x would be equal to cos 65 of your initial velocity, which is 16 meters per second, and that gives you 6.762 meters per second. Again, we know that acceleration in x is 0 meters per second squared. Solving for dx using this equation once again, since we know acceleration is 0, we get that dx is equal to the initial velocity in the x, which is 6.762 meters per second, times time. Now applying this analysis to the y component, we know that the initial velocity in the y component is sine 65 of 16 meters per second. And this gives you 14.50 meters per second. We know that acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Again, letting upwards be positive. And over here, we don't know the change in time as well, as we're not given enough information. And we also don't know the displacement in the y. So the equation we're using is the one with dy is equal to v1y, change in t, plus half ay t squared. Looking at your two equations that you've just created, you'll notice that both of them only have one unknown, which is time. So you should think to yourself, how can I relate these two displacements in the x and y? And you remember that we were actually given the angle in which the hill makes, which is 30 degrees with the horizontal. So through Sokotoa, we know that 10 of an angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And since we have a displacement equation for both the x and y component, we can actually solve. So tan of 30 degrees which is the angle of the hill, is equal to change in dy over change in dx. As you'll note that the y component is your opposite and your x component is your adjacent. So factoring your equation on the top, you'll see that one of the top t's cancels with the t on the bottom. Now you only have one term with the t and that's what you isolate for. Isolating for t and then solving for it gives you 2.16 seconds. And now that we have this time, we can actually plug it into our displacement equations of dx and dy over here. Now solving in your time, you'll see that when you solve, you get the displacements in the x and y to be 14.622 meters and 8.4425 meters respectively. Now the change in the displacement in total using Pythagorean theorem again is dx squared plus dy squared square rooted. Now solving for the total displacement, you'll get 16.88 meters as your result, which rounds to 17 meters as there are two sig figs in the question. And solving for your angle over here, you remember that 10 is opposite over adjacent, so y component over x component, which gives you 30 degrees. So how far up the hill will the rock go before hitting the ground? It'll go 17 meters up the hill, or you could equivalently say 17 meters 30 degrees above the horizontal. Moving on to question number 7, a projectile launcher launches a snowball at 45 meters per second from the top of building 1. Does the snowball land on top of building 2? So you're given this diagram that I've drawn over here. Building 1 has a height of 12 meters, building 2 has a height of 25 meters. They're 150 meters apart from each other and building 2 is 35 meters in width. So your projection angle is 35 degrees and you know that your initial velocity is 45 meters per second. So breaking down the initial velocity into x and y components once again, we see that the x component is related through cos, and your y component is related through sine. The acceleration in the x once again is 0 meters per second squared, whereas in the y it's due to gravity, so negative 9.8 meters per second squared, letting upwards and forwards be positive. Now your change in the displacement of the y is actually just your two building heights subtracted from each other. 
So 25 meters minus 12 meters is 13 meters. And then you have enough info over here. Again, using this kinematic equation, you rearrange to solve for t. Solving your numbers in and then solving for t, you get two positive times, 0.5641 seconds and 4.703 seconds. Now you might be confused as to which time to choose because both of them are positive. But you'll note here that we're solving for when the displacement is 13 meters in the y direction. Now referring back to the diagram, as it's traveling onto the roof, you'll see that it hits 13 meters first before it lands on the building and then when it's on the building. So you know that this isn't your time because that's the first time it passes 13 meters on its way up. However, this is the time when it lands on the building. Now using that equation again, knowing that acceleration in the x is zero, you get that the displacement in the x direction is 183 meters. Now since the buildings are 150 meters apart, in order to see if the snowball lands on top of building 2, you do 183 meters minus 150 meters, and you get 33 meters. And you'll note that the ball lands on top of building 2 since the width of it was 35 meters. Therefore, the snowball lands on top of building 2. Now question number 8 is more of a theory type question. There's no actual calculations involved, but the question is, in a physics demonstration, a projectile launcher on the floor is aimed directly at a target hanging from the ceiling on the other side of the room. When the projectile is launched, the target is released at exactly the same time and the projectile hits the target. Explain why the projectile will always hit the target as long as it reaches the target before they strike the floor. Since the projectile launchers aim directly at the target and they're released at the same time, you know that the projectile will always hit the target. The explanation for this is because they both experience the same acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared in the downwards direction. And this is something that's constant and doesn't change between objects, thus it's independent of the mass. Now the last question we're going to solve is one that really resembles one that I got on a test before. I actually found this in the survey textbook in the 9th edition, but I'll just write out the question for you guys and then we'll solve it together. So the question reads, a soccer player kicks a rock horizontally off a cliff 40 meters high into a pool of water. If the player hears the splash 3 seconds later, what was the initial speed given to the rock? Assume speed of sound to be 343 meters per second. Since the soccer player kicked the rock horizontally off the cliff, we know that the initial velocity is only in the x direction. The cliff is 40 meters high, represented by the variable h. If the player hears the splash 3 seconds later, we know that the fastest possible time that the player hears the sound is if it travels the shortest distance through the air, and the shortest distance would be the diagonal. We're going to represent this with the variable r. Now we know that r, which is a scalar quantity, is equal to the speed of sound times time. However, we don't know how much time it took for the sound to travel back. The only time we have here is when the player actually hears the sound. If you try to solve for t in your y component, you'll see that this term cancels because your initial velocity in the y was zero. Isolating for t, you get that t is equal to the square root of 2 times the displacement in the y over the acceleration due to gravity. Now letting upwards and forwards be positive once again, you get that 2 times negative 40 over negative 9.8 all square rooted would give you 2.857 seconds. Now using this to plug into here, we were given the speed of sound and then we're solving for the time it took for the sound to travel back. He hears it 3 seconds later, but it took the rock 2.857 seconds to hit the water. Solving for r, we get 49 meters. Now we have to solve for the initial speed, which is vi. The initial speed is just equal to the speed in the x direction since the y direction had no speed initially. Since these are all scalar quantities, we know that the initial speed in the x direction is just the distance in the x divided by time. We can actually solve for dx right away because we have both r and h, and note that this is a right angle triangle, so Pythagorean theorem applies. Solving for dx, you'll get that 49 meters squared minus 40 meters squared square rooted gives you approximately 28.3 meters. Solving this into the equation 28.3 meters over the time that we solved for gives you 9.91 meters per second, and this is your initial speed. Now I'm actually going to wrap this session off with a test question that I got on my test. It was a pretty simple kinematics problem, but I'm going to leave it up to you guys to solve on your own, and I'll just write down the final answer so you can check your work. So the question asks, a ball rolls off a 6 meter high sloped roof at an angle of depression of 25 degrees with a speed of 4.5 meters per second. It lands on the ground below. Part A asks, what is the horizontal distance the ball travels from the roof to the ground? And part B asks, what is the velocity of the ball just before it hits the ground? So for part A, your answer should be dx is equal to 3.8 meters. And for part B, your answer should be that the velocity is equal to 12 meters per second, 70 degrees below the horizontal, remembering that you have
have two sig figs. So that concludes this video. Next time, I'm going to be talking about relative motion.